UCF. I'm Brandon Helwig. I'm with the UCF site on Rivals.com. So uh, take me back, you know, I guess 13 years now. You're at Texas playing behind Colt McCoy, obviously established starter. So you're looking for a new opportunity. You transferred to Tulsa. I know Gus was the offensive coordinator at that time. Just what was it like? Those early memories of Gus, I know you set out, I think, the 08 year, which was this final year at Tulsa. Just kind of take me back to that process and your first impressions back then of Gus Malzahn. Yeah, I just remember uh, taking my official visit there and, and seeing the offense that Coach Malzahn had built and the innovation and uh, the way they're getting the ball to the playmakers, the way they featured the quarterback. And, you know, honestly, I was just really excited. And after that visit, I knew that's where I wanted to go. And, and the relationship that me and Coach Malzahn built um, just from that official visit weekend, I knew it was going to be a special one. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. GJ, this is Matt Marshall, the Orlando Sentinel. What was it that kind of drew you to the UCF job? And can you kind of talk a little bit about what that discussion was with, with Coach Malzahn about maybe coming here and, and taking over the job here at UCF? Yeah, you know, we, we jumped on the phone and, and we talked about it a little bit. Um, and really, I just told him, I, you know, I'll, I'll start swimming right now for this opportunity. I mean, it's a, I mean, this is a no-brainer. It's a top 10 program. Um, and, and, and I just wanted to be a part of it and be back with Coach Malzahn. Um, the reputation he has, and, and I know we're going to win here. And it was it was a no brainer for me and my family. Hello, Coach Trace Trelko, Sons of UCF. You've been a bit of a traveling man the last couple of years with some stops. What was it about your time with the Eagles that's influenced your coaching? Uh, you know, I think just um, you know around professionals every day, being around the best of the best, um, seeing how it's done. Um, seeing the best players every day, you kind of get, especially in recruiting, you kind of get a feel of what it's supposed to look like. Um, obviously, Coach Peterson is a tremendous coach, Super Bowl winning coach, and just uh, every day, just sitting there in the meetings with him and, and, and be a sponge and soak up everything I could. Um, you know, it really influenced uh, my professional career, and, and uh, I'm very thankful to him and, and Jeff Stoutland, the line coach, Press Taylor. Uh, Mike Groh, Deuce Staley, all those guys really had a, a big influence on my coaching career. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Kyle Nash with a three-point conversion. Um, you, you, so a lot of the talk since uh, Coach Mazan has come in is about waking the sleeping giant that's here at UCF. Coach Gibbs talked about it a bit uh, yesterday himself. Um, where is it that your role would fit into the waking of the sleeping giant? You know, I think just developing quarterbacks. Uh, like I just said, I've been um, at, at the best of the best. Um, the NFL as a, as a player, as a coach, so to, you know, helping develop uh, Dylan and the rest of the quarterbacks and recruiting. Um, you know, I pride myself in being a great recruiter and anything I can do, obviously, to, to help the team win, I'm going to do. But those, you know, two key areas are what I'm going to focus on. Hey, Coach, Andrew Gluco, Black and Gold Banneret. Oh, how has your prior experience uh, at Tulsa against UCF kind of played into your decision to coming to Orlando? Um, I mean, obviously, I knew the the type of athlete that will be here, um, the speed, um, you know. So once again, it was a situation where um, you know it was a no brainer for me. I have you know some uh, I know the conference pretty well from being at Tulsa and then GA and at SMU. So um, you know, I just knew this one of the top programs around the nation and the top in, in this conference. GJ, Jason Beattie with 24-7 Sports. You spent the past year at the University of Hawaii. <clears throat> Obviously, Dylan Gabriel and, and previously Mackenzie Milton are Hawaiian quarterbacks. Uh, what is it about quarterbacks and, and being developed in Hawaii? Obviously, Tua and Marcus Mariota, but what did you learn from your year at Hawaii? And uh, what are you excited about Dylan? Yeah, I think they just uh, start training at a, a very uh, young age with the, the history of the run and shoot there in the state with June Jones. They, they grow up throwing the ball and I think they're just, um, they're natural, um, you know, and just watching DG on film, even last year when I was at Hawaii getting some ideas, um, you know, he's just a natural passer. You don't have to, um, you know, the arc on the deep ball, it's very natural for him. He's very accurate. Um, got a lot of moxie um, to him. Just being around him the last, you know, week, um, his leadership skills are off the charts. Um, you know, so I think he's, he has all the tools to, to, 
you know, be a top level guy at the next level. And obviously he's already proven that at the, the collegiate level. Coach, uh, Brandon Helwig again, Rivals.com. So what's kind of just the process been like for you since you've arrived here, I guess, in the last week and a half? Is it just kind of getting to know the players? What's kind of been your 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 day-to-day -day focus, I guess, as you try to get ready for spring practice, which will start before too long? Yeah, I think getting to know the quarterback room was the first thing I did. All those guys are, are, are great people, calling their parents, getting to know them. Um, it's, a, it's a family around here, so we want to make sure and and uh, as soon as my wife gets here, we'll have them over to the house as soon as the COVID stuff clears up. But um, yeah, and then obviously besides that is, is recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Um, just on the phone 24 seven with high school coaches in the, in the Orlando area and the, the state of Orlando. And then um, obviously the state of Florida. GJ, this is Matt Rochelle again from the Orlando Sentinel. Um, kind of a bigger question. When you, when you look at a quarterback, what makes a, a, a good quarterback? And, and what is kind of you, you've noticed over the last couple of years during your job uh, looking at quarterbacks? Yeah, I think first is the it factor. Do they have that it factor? Some guys have it and some guys don't. When the when the lights come on, do they perform or do they not? You know, there's a lot of guys that are pretty good in practice and, and have a good arm or or they can run well, but when the lights come on, they perform. And, and that's what I'm most excited about DG, man, is is that dude performs now. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a great player and just looking forward to, to get to know him a little bit better. Hey, Coach Kyle Nash again with the three-point conversion. So um, it's been said that uh, soon you coaches will, uh, if you haven't started already, uh, go into the proverbial woodshed and preparing for spring practice. What do you envision so far? And I know it's early on. What do you envision so far would be your main focus as you stepped off uh, onto the field with uh, DG and company to get spring practice going? Yeah, that, that's definitely already begun. Uh, we've been up here early in the morning, late at night, getting ready for spring practice. And like I said earlier, I think, you know, just focus on, um, you know, DG and, and the quarterbacks, obviously, um, getting those guys prepared, getting those guys ready mentally uh, for practice. And, and then anything else Coach Coach Malzahn needs, pass game, run game, uh, you know, I feel very comfortable with both. And, and just, you know, getting together um, with the rest of the guys and developing a plan and, and uh, see what those guys did well last year. I think that's an important piece of it. What did these guys do well last year? Right? How can we incorporate that in our system and uh, really building this system? You know, obviously Coach Malzahn is running the show and just building this system um, to be the best it can be. Coach Brandon Hellwick from Rivals again. Just kind of going off that note, talking about the offense. What do you think an offense uh, at UCF under Gus and with Dylan Gabriel is going to look like? Maybe be reminiscent of some of those Tulsa offenses you were a part of, or, or what do you what do you think an offense might look like? Uh, high scoring. Uh, I think that's what it's going to be. Uh, whether it's a run, pass, whatever it is, we'll take what the defense gives us. But it's going to be explosive, um, high octane. Um, we're going to get after it. I know that put a lot of points on the board. Trace Rolko again with Sons of UCF. How much of the offense do you think you can, uh, uh, you know, introduce during this spring camp? Uh, what's the learning curve that you expect during spring? Yeah, I think we're just going to set the foundation is what Coach Malzahn said. We're going to set the foundation. We really want to evaluate during spring. You know, I don't think it's it would be you know, wise to throw a lot at them because uh, we want to see what we have on the roster. Um, so just setting the base foundation, then we'll get into the bells and whistles, you know, once we start our, our summer program and, and getting ready for the season. Yeah, GJ, uh, it's Matt Rochelle again. You mentioned Dylan, obviously. You, you, when you come in, you've got an experienced quarterback like Dylan. He's been here a couple of years. It's not like you have to really kind of remold the guy. What what do you want to do with him, and what do you plan to do with him in, in the off season? Kind of maybe talking with him so he can make that next jump, you know, the next level of jump. Yeah, I think um, you know just looking at the offense a little bit um, of, from last year, maybe just uh, looking at some of the things that that I can help with and the, the my pro experience protections, um, check downs, right when the play's over, um, taking care of himself. Um, just kind of being a pro, uh, being a pro. And obviously he's got the leadership qualities and just keep on developing those. Hey coach, Andrew Gluco back, black and gold banner right again. Uh, we talk a lot about Dylan Gabriel. Have you actually had a chance to look at any, you know, practice uh, film from the other quarterbacks on the depth chart? Uh, a little bit. I definitely watched all their high school film. 
Um, not a ton of practice film, to be honest with you, but I watched all their high school film. Um, and, and I'm excited, to be honest with you. I think there's some guys in that room that can, then you know, do what we want to do and uh, some athleticism, um, obviously some high profile guys that, that were recruited all over the nation. And, and so excited to also uh, work with those guys and develop them. And, and uh, you always got to have more than one. So um, that's definitely going to be something I'm excited to work with those guys. All right, last question from Jamie. Thanks. Hi, Coach. Jamie Say from WKMG. We're the CBS affiliate here in Orlando. Welcome. Just back to Dylan. From your experience, what have you seen in terms of improvement in a quarterback from year two to year three? And how much upside does he still have after what you've seen of him on tape and as you get to know him? Yeah, I think obviously he performed at a very high level um, last year. But um, I think, like I kind of said, um, when the when uh, knowing when the play is over, right? Um, knowing when to check the ball down, taking care of yourself. You know, you got to last the whole season here. This is a deal you got to, you're the most important guy on the field. Um, so you got to understand when the play is over and, and protect yourself. And, and obviously the longer you're in the system, uh, the more you're going to feel more comfortable. You're going to be able to master that system. You look at a guy like Tom Brady that spent so many years in the system. There's a reason why he's so efficient at it. So we got to get him um, in the film room. I got to get with him, meet with him and, uh, you know, get him back to that, that level of, of you know, be able to, uh, I guess, master uh, this offense.